welcome back to another video feature of the Immersive Worlds Handbook. As you might see today, I am at Universal Studios, uh, specifically Universal Studios Singapore. Um, so I want to take you inside this uh, theme park that's part of uh, Singapore's massive um, Sentosa Resort Island area. Um, certainly popular with tourists, popular with, with locals. And uh, the goal in, in this particular video is to do some comparing and contrasting with other Universal theme parks. I just had a chance to visit a couple, of, actually one month ago, I believe, uh, Universal Studios Hollywood. And uh, so I want to use this opportunity to give you a sense of comparison, uh, contrast, similarities that, that I detect uh, at different Universal theme parks. So let's go inside and take a look at um, some of the spaces. All right, so I am just exiting or leaving um, the front gate Main Street area, which of course is Hollywood themed. And now I was pretty excited to see this, um, the New York themed section of the park. And one of the things you're going to notice here in comparing um, universals from around the world would be, of course, the canopy above, which is very, very functional. If you haven't been to Singapore, it is, um, to say the least, warm, humid, hot, sweltering. Um, and also, of course, many, many, many storms. Um, fortunately, I've been pretty lucky this week and haven't been rained out. So again, haven't had a chance to look at anything, just checking things out. My first line of um, comparison would be to uh, Greenwich Village theming at New York, New York Casino in Las Vegas. The difference here, of course, in, at New York, New York, you're getting much more uh, forced perspective, whereas in this case you have, I mean, you certainly have some of it, as you can see here, with the smaller scale buildings uh, uh, or windows and features above the um, street level, something that Disney, of course, popularized uh, at Main Street USA. Yeah, I mean, so uh, you have a pizzeria, you have um, kind of a nice touch here, some uh, faded uh, street signs that I guess they didn't replace. Of course, part of the theming, right? And um, yeah, I mean, more extensive than I thought. Actually, as I'm seeing some of the features here past the Sesame Street truck. I'm do getting a little of that feel of um, New York, New York. Much bigger scale, of course, much bigger scale. And that appears to be the end of the theme land. Um, most of the theme lands here seem to be fairly um, distinct in size. And I guess in a sense you could say this is a second Main Street, which I do find curious. Um, not a lot of attraction, so it appears to me that um, as far as the flow, if you could see down there, uh, we're coming in, that's the um, Hollywood Main Street, and then in a sense you're filtered through this Main Street, which is New York, New York. Um, it looks like there are a few shows here, theaters, uh, I see some restaurants, um, some shops. So in a sense, um, this is quite unique given that I've never seen a theme park where you have two Main Streets. Um, so props to them in terms of thinking about extending the theming and doing a little bit more than you would expect. Um, I guess I wonder why they didn't put attractions in this area, but uh, you see a subway here, kind of cool. And um, we also have some um, windows up here. And of course, the uh, question would be, are those um, in a sense of, you know, uh, Walt Disney, do those have significance in, in terms of the names? It looks like here, uh, this store here looks like an antique store, just the side. And then just right here, you're seeing the, um, the entrance to Sci-Fi City, uh, I believe. It looks, sure looks <laughs> uh, sci-fi-ish, yeah, we got the Transformers and, and everything else. So uh, this is a feature here, um, as you, uh, I should probably go on this side so you can see it. Uh, as you can see, it is a... Um, subway station, simulated subway station, Brooklyn, Queens at the top. And you come around here, uh, pretty cool, it's locked. 
But um, then the curious thing is you can see here you have steps going down and it leads nowhere. It just looks like a storage shed. So, um, you know, again, presumably designers wouldn't necessarily have the time or um, inclination to, uh, what could you do? You could expand that out. You could have some stairs that go down to at least give the guest a sense that it goes down and you could still keep the lock here, of course, and in, in that way um, you would have that sense of depth. You could also do something cool uh, in a multimedia sense and perhaps have something down there that looks like gives the impression of um, a subway station. Again, most people who um, would come to the park would probably just pass by this. Um, they might curiously look um, at this feature and not think anything of it. So uh, yeah, perhaps uh, not really necessary, but just something I noted here in their uh, New York City theme, uh, theme uh, landscape. And also another icon, of course, 30 Rock, Rockefeller Center. And also then, of course, some referencing of the uh, famous, iconic uh, New York City Public Library represented here. So this is kind of nice. We get a historic looking uh, parking meter here in the theme land. And in addition to the subway, just right across the way, you have this newsstand, which looks like it actually is a merch stand. So kind of quaint uh, feature here in the cityscape of New York. And also uh, one other thing you notice here uh, in comparison, of course, with uh, other universal theme parks is um, the uh, connection to uh, Chinese culture in terms of some of the names and signage. And you also see this throughout the Hollywood um, theme land of Universal Studios. Okay, and here we are in um, the third theme land, or actually fourth I visited today, not sequentially, which is, um, sorry, I believe it's called Sci-Fi City. I should check the map. Hold me to that if I'm wrong. Uh, and you can see here the Transformers ride, which uh, I won't be going on. I've gone to the one at Universal Studios in Hollywood. More Transformers theming, very popular. Uh, yes, and when I think of the future, I think of uh, Stardots, the famous ice cream that I can remember uh, from all my time going to theme parks. And we have, don't hold me accountable to knowing which Transformer this is. Um, I'm not sure, but people are taking a lot of pictures. And then we have the Starbot Cafe, which uh, I'm gonna have to check out and see if there's any kind of uh, futuristic theming to it. And we have, I uh, heard it wasn't going to be operating today, but there is a dueling roller coaster as well. Uh, going to have to figure out what the uh, connection is to sci-fi and the future, I guess. Yeah, so uh, fairly uh, small theme land, and it appears to me that, you know, you get a little bit of the futuristic uh, theming that you might expect at a uh, Disney theme park, but in a sense, it seems like this theme land is mainly um, a venue for a couple of shops for this um, dueling roller coaster, which is, uh, oh wow, it's Battlestar Galactica, so that is kind of cool. Haven't seen a Battlestar Galactica themed ride, and you can see here some Cylon theming that they have as well. Uh, but yeah, it seems to be, um, you know, a sense of placeholder for this one. Um, circular ride here and no troika of some sort and then also of course the big uh, Transformers uh, movie brand yeah so um, so one of the things I uh, did note here is that uh, since it's a dueling coaster uh, you have the uh, Cylon area there and you have down here the human area so presumably the idea of the dueling coaster is that one car is the Cylons and one car is the humans. And you have a little bit, uh, you know about the Galactica spin-off um, Caprica, so a little bit here of um, that closed uh, stand, whatever it is. Yeah, so I had a chance to uh, check out, as you can see, the uh, 
sci-fi futuristic um, cafe that's part of the um, sci-fi city theming. And I have to say, I was actually impressed. It, uh, it you know, it's it's decent for your typical food court type place. With as far as what they've done with the theming here on the walls, um, space stuff, planets, the red giant, Mars, etc. And um, you can see here a little more behind me. It looks like. Transformers merch, of course. So, um, yeah, it reminds me a little bit um, just some of the aesthetics of the now closed um, Star Trek attraction at the Hilton in Las Vegas. Um, actually, they had some pretty extensive theming there with um, the restrooms, and of course, there was a main ride, and then really very extensive queuing areas that also were, were themed accordingly with Star Trek in the future. So, anyway, you can see some of the, the cafe here, which certainly has. I think some unique charm for me with uh, using a theme that tends to be somewhat tired and um, out of date if you think about how much sci-fi futuristic themes get used. Okay, and as you can see here, I am leaving Sci-Fi City and I'm coming up on only in a theme park. Uh, will you see this? Uh, ancient Egypt. Sorry about the sound of the coaster. A lot of cool theming, for sure. Yeah. Hieroglyphics, Anubis, what you might expect. My colleague uh, Filippo Carlo would be uh, in heaven indeed. We had visited together with uh, Florian Freitag, um, Universal Studios Hollywood, and they just have the mummy ride there. And here are some performers coming out as we speak. Looks like in the background, yep. If you can see them. But in any case, we had visited the um, mummy ride and had really expected there to be this kind of extensive theming. This indeed, to me, seems to be uh, the most extensive theming I've seen in a theme park. Uh, references might be the Luxor in Las Vegas as well, uh, but this is quite different, I think, um, and fairly substantial. Yeah. The performers coming. <laughs> Live action. People, characters growling at us. <laughs> yeah, and here inside the um, Egyptian theming area, I'm looking at the Oasis Spice Cafe. And of course, one of the obvious things we notice um, in translating a theme park for a non-US audience is to um, be on top of it in terms of, you know, signage and information. And in this case, uh, we have, you know, uh, a cuisine cultural aspect in terms of halal food, which is certified here. And uh, yeah, the theming, I have to say, is, is pretty cool inside. The hieroglyphs and all, as you can see, very cool. So as I leave um, this uh, cafe, one of the things I have to say so far that I've discovered at um, Universal Studios in Singapore is the fact that they really pay attention so far, this is the second along with Sci-Fi City, to doing extensive theming in their food hall areas just here in the outside area. Not as um, well themed as the inside, but um, this is impressive to me. I think a lot of times in American theme parks, we get throwaway theming or no theming at all, something very, very generic because they don't care so much about um, the fact that you should have theming that's consistent throughout the various attractions and throughout the um, food areas as well. And actually, as we exit the back here, um, they did a lot of cool theming in this area um, just at the um, rear of this Oasis uh, food venue. So uh, here we are in uh, one of the seven theme lands of the park, and as you can see here, we're getting a lot of um, Madagascar theming. Um, this is kind of cool, this giant crate ship, if I could get that in the picture, there it is, you can see behind the trees. 
Um, still trying to figure out if that's a facade or if there's a ride or attraction inside there, so I'll be checking that out later. It might actually be this, the uh, Madagascar a Crate Adventure, so I'm thinking that would be the uh, obvious concept, right? Um, yeah, so I, I guess, uh, like I've been seeing in uh, many theme parks in the States, one of the things I might say is that there's a lot of theming uh, along the lines of specific brands, or I guess films, animated features as brands, so we're seeing more and more of this. I do like some of the theming they've done here. I think it's uh, fairly quaint and um, fits in thematically. Here's a, an old carousel, or a new carousel, but certainly carousels have an old flair to them. And then I think as we um, exit here, the Madagascar theming area, we're probably going into the Shrek themed area, as you can see from the castle, clearly homage to um, Cinderella Castle at, at Disney. Here's another feature. Again, uh, stuff for here, uh, stuff here is a little reminiscent of um, Disney's Animal Kingdom, certainly with the safari type theme that they have going on. Yeah. And again, the recognizability of um, the Madagascar brand as a um, animated feature, as product lines, toys, and so forth. And actually coming down this way, uh, the giant tree there up, up ahead of us, a weenie I guess, um, looks fairly significant and substantial here. Okay, so I'm going to take you to a few other theme lands as well. Okay, so now uh, we are going to leave um, Egypt and go into the next theme land, which is completely unrelated, or I guess you could say as related as anything is in a theme park. And that is, you might be able to hear from the music, yes, it's uh, Jurassic Park. The Lost World Jurassic Park. And so, um, again, this is the first time I'm seeing it, as are you, perhaps. Got some dinosaurs over here. Kids love them dinosaurs. Uh, we also have uh, the Jurassic Park ride, which I should check out in comparison with the other one I've visited. Um, Discovery Food Court, which is perhaps um, dinosaur themed. And even here we have uh, a placard a little bit about um, the extinction, extinction of the dinosaurs, which um, I don't know how much you think about that at a theme park, but uh, hey, it doesn't hurt to uh, throw in some educational opportunities. Um, you might check out the, uh, I don't know if these light up at night, it's daytime and I can't tell, but um, kind of a cool feature, aesthetically. And lots of vegetation as we'd expect in Singapore, which is the lush uh, tropical environment here. So that fits in quite well with the theme. So as I come out of the Discovery Food Court, again, I wanted to offer that uh, they've done an excellent job here, as you just saw in the video, of um, really doing the theming in terms of the dining opportunities. I think something that's often overlooked as I pass through the dinosaur lakes here, something that's often overlooked in a lot of theme parks. So Discovery Food Court, like the sci-fi offering and the Oasis Egyptian offering in the other theme lines, I think, 
uh, maintain this focus on effective theming and all components of the theme park. Okay, and now we're entering Far, Far Away, which um, has a pretty impressive castle. And this, of course, is inspired or directly connected, to, I guess you'd say, to Shrek, uh, the branded property that is very, very fa famous. Continue the tour just behind me. It looks like there's a new ride here. Um, Puss in Boots Giant Journey. And you know, my first impression is uh, it's well themed. And the curious thing about it is it starts to feel like a third Main Street. Um, and not that you couldn't do that. I mean, certainly um, when you go to Disney, you, you feel that you know New Orleans Square as an example has the appearance, but um, this is laid out more, I guess, in the sense of the Main Street concept of Disney. So you have the shops, you have the street signs, you have actual streets, so obviously for pedestrian flow, that has a practical purpose. Um, but the signage in the buildings, again, it's almost like you took a um, Main Street and you themed it in this uh, Shrek land that they've done. And it's certainly fine that they've done this, but it's just an observation as far as first impressions here in um, this theme land. So let's continue to look around. And I'm just le leaving the Shrek theme land and I'm back once again um, where I was before, which is um, the Madagascar theme land. And actually in doing the loop and spending some time doing rides and uh, visiting some shops and attractions, you know, to say it's not a, um, it doesn't feel to me like a huge theme park, but the theming they've done is, um, I think, very effective. As I said, when you get into um, some of the theme lands, particularly I think Egypt is remarkable. Um, and as I said, all the uh, food courts, every single food court that I had a chance to visit was really well defined and fit into the theme quite effectively. So it's something that other theme parks certainly take a lesson from, uh, not to leave everything just to the rides and the major attractions. Um, at the same time, there there were certainly a few misses. Um, the sci-fi world felt like just a vehicle to house the Transformers ride and any of the associated Transformer properties. Um, in contrast, I think the Egypt land, sure, a lot's focused on the mummy, even the archaeological adventure ride that's a tiny bit less exciting than the Mummy, the Revenge of the Mummy. Um, that ties in also with the Mummy, but I think overall you get a different feel and it does feel like a place uh, more effectively than the sci-fi world, which, or sci-fi city, sorry, which just feels to me um, kind of lackluster and, and just doesn't have that depth and part of it could just be lost on me because I'm not, you know, 12 years old and interested in Transformers and so forth. And that, that could certainly explain some of that. Um, Shrek Land as well feels like it's a, um, a property or it's, it's a placeholder for uh, this particular property, this uh, franchise of Shrek. So for me, you know, that also um, presents some problems just uh, in terms of theming. And uh, I would also say the two, what I call the two main streets at the beginning of the park, the New York, um, which is the second one, and the first, the Old Time Hollywood, with some Chinese elements. Those are, I think, quite effective and offer uh, something to the guests that's um, 
fairly close, I think, on par with um, Disney's Main Street, and in some ways maybe is even a little more interesting. Didn't get to check out because it wasn't running the Battlestar Galactica coaster. The theming there also seemed a little um, latched on and maybe not as in-depth as the theming that I noted in the two Main Street areas and also in the Egypt area. Um, so overall, quite impressed with the theme park. Making comparisons to Universal Studios in Hollywood, I would certainly say that you have the same focus on branding. Of course, you have all the theme park elements that you would expect at a theme park. Um, you have that same focus on branding. You have some, I think, different things here given the culture, the population. So as I pointed out before, different signage, um, different culinary opportunities. By the way, the food was quite good, the food that I sampled, some of the Indian cuisine. And um, so as you would expect at any theme park, some of those elements are gonna be present. I think where it departs are in some of the functional areas. Obviously the canopies over the two entry lands are done for functional reasons. Um, some of the same granted properties that you would find at any other universal, universal park and similar to other theme parks around the world. Um, I guess the other thing I would say is that the theming itself, as I said, is quite extensive and I think they've done um, a lot with the theming and they should be commended for that. And um, overall, I would say that it's just um, a, a fairly remarkable theme park that has a lot of opportunities, I think, to immerse the guests in a space that, as I mentioned earlier, is not incredibly large, but one that is certainly um, worthy of one's visit. So I hope you enjoyed this video feature, and I have a few others to offer on some of the attractions here at Universal. And uh, come back and listen to additional video features from uh, spaces like these and many others around the world.